Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. So yesterday was uh, Dudu's first birthday. And uh, so we bought this uh, Japanese style cheesecake for Dudu. Yeah, it's actually for, for humans, for us humans. And Dudu just actually took a few very small bites. And I'm gonna sketch this three quarters of a cheesecake in my sketchbook art journal right now before we finish eating all of these slices. So as usual, I'm gonna start using my uh, Sailor's Few Day Fountain Pen. I think I'm gonna use my bamboo colored fountain pen with a 55 degree bent nib. And uh, my current sketchbook is an etcher mixed media, A4 size landscape our journal um, and this sketchbook has let me see I think about 60 pages for me to fill up I think it's gonna take me about um, two and a half months to fill it up yeah so this is my current sketchbook that I've been working for about let's say two weeks now a lot of fun sketches at cafes and also at home art journal from last weekend. Still need to finish this up. Cafe sketch in West Vancouver on a sunny day. Brunch time in East Vancouver. Have fun sketching with my Sunday sketch class. Some more little daily snippets of cafe times. Short stays at cafes. Okay. So I'm gonna start with the, uh, the large contour outline of the top of the cake, which is a very round ellipse. Yeah, so this cake right now is an ellipse with a quarter cut off, one side and the other. This is the contour outline that I see for the top of the cake, and then the thickness area. And I see one large and one small trapezoid defining the thickness on the interior and the exterior thickness with one round curve on the bottom. Accentuate and adding a bit of fluffiness around the edges, air bubbles and the loose texture on the interior accentuation on that bottom line. A uh, little bit of fluffiness around the outside edge over here. And keep using these gentle pressured lines to further add some more surface texture of the cheesecake. It looks very simple, but I do see a lot of nice details here and there but not the top side. Now, uh, just drawing the, uh, the letters of the brand. The logo is a crown, accentuated on bottom edges, so it stands out from the paper even more strongly. Um, and then this uh, foil, little paper plate on the bottom, it has a thickness. So all human-made things, they very rarely have a perfect look. Uh, so now I'm just adding these crumbs of the cake here and there for the natural look of the cake itself. Now it's time to have fun painting watercolors. Again, my painting materials, it's a very simple short list. So two water brushes from Holbein, one large tip, and one medium tip for finer details. And the paint I'm using these days is the Mondial watercolor palette containing 12 basic colors in it. When we're doing a painting, we don't have to use like a great range of colors. With only a basic set of 12 colors, we can mix any colors in the world uh, from scratch. And of course, I will need a towel to clean the brush tips, switching between colors. Let's go for it. Let's start with a large tip water brush for the first layer of uh, quick, gentle washes. 
So in the very beginning of a watercolor painting, I like to wet the entire area with clear water by just dragging the large tip water brush around the area. So the first layer of paint is gonna spread out very smoothly without any dry brushing marks. So this is diluted yellow ochre with a little bit lemon yellow mix in. Yeah, so it should be a very diluted version, especially the interior and the exterior thickness areas, a very, very light uh, yellow tone. So one of the issues that a lot of watercolor learners are facing is that they start their first layer too heavily. Now, starting to add a slightly heavier yellow-orange value, wet onto wet. So this is a mix of yellow ochre with a little bit orange. And the thickness areas on the inside and outside, very, very diluted yellow-orange. Now, third layer, uh, orange-brown. Orange mixed with a little bit of burnt sienna, again, wet onto wet. So this cake might look pretty easy to paint, but actually, it's a bit challenging. Uh, you have to be really good uh, with water control and mixing these uh, color values pretty accurately and layer them together in the right order. You also need to put the new layer of that color at the right time. Make sure that previous layer is not way too wet and not all dried up either. Okay, so now next step is to paint the first layer of the foil platform using my own kind of gray. Uh, the mix of cobalt blue, royal purple, and a little bit green. Super diluted for the first layer. As always, let it dry off a little bit. Okay, so while waiting for the platform's first layer to dry, I want to add a bit more surface uh, spongy texture for the cake. It's not super flat. It actually has uh, several color definitions as I see it more deeply. Same for the thickness area on the outside, on the inside. The inside is shaded with a slight bit of a diluted sepia kind of tone, especially this side, opposite to the window. And uh, the roof of the cake, also casting a little shadow on that outside area. Using leftover brown to uh, just paint in those letters and that crown. Some more little dabs, wet onto wet, for even more spongy texture. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, this process, painting the cake, is challenging because you need to um, use the right hand pressure. When you're dabbing new colors in, you're not lifting the previous colors off. Okay, so now just adding some more uh, darker grays for the foil platform. Uh, same color mixtures, uh, just heavier with uh, less water into it. Same for the shadow, uh, same kind of gray, bluish gray, a darker value around the very bottom edge, even darker for the third try, and same for the foil area, shadow from the, uh, from the cake. So here is a look of my finished cake sketch. Took me about 25 minutes to draw and paint. And moving on, I am upstairs now and Dudu is peacefully sleeping in his scratcher plate. So now I'm in my pajamas. I just wanna relax in my pajamas and um, sketch Dudu over here in my art journal, starting with his forehead area, the bridge connecting the two pointy ears Again, the two ears are kind of like organic triangles, uh, actually little pyramid shapes, and tufts of hair inside those ears. Uh, the chin is actually pretty pointy, like a lion. And then these uh, eyes, the eyes of the cats, when they are closed, is kind of like tadpoles. The little triangular notes, and this lovely little smile in dreamland. Uh, the whiskers using gentle and rapid hand pressure. The uh, tabby masquerade mask, uh, drawing these little stripes around the eyes and the division lines, uh, coloring his ears with solid uh, dark sepia ink. Yeah, so basically when you're drawing, we're seeing somewhere that's pretty black, you can feel free to use solid black or brown ink to color those shapes in. Now, just drawing this super fluffy neck area of Dudu. And when I'm outlining most part of his body, I use these loose organic segments of lines to depict the fur uh, texture. Uh, that's his, the tip of his tail. Finishing off this elbow area of one of his little arms. 
yeah, all the way down, hiding beneath the tail tip, uh, the back. So the fur of Dudu is longer right here on the back, uh, on his bellies, and then drawing uh, his hind legs, starting with these little toes and uh, the black pads. I can see two pads and then the thigh of uh, one of his hind legs on top of another, the toes and the heel. So that's his uh, hind legs. Now starting to use loose squiggles and gentle pressure to add the layers of fur texture. And I also decided to shade in his black tail with solid dark sepia ink in these directions. And adding some super fluffy fur texture around Dudu's be uh, belly area, division between the black and white fur area, these organic razor lines. And now having fun adding in these little stripes of the tabby forehead area. This is how I do the tabby pattern. Yeah, and it's so easy and fun to do with this uh, few day fountain pen. Now drawing this little blanket under his body. Again, it's not in a perfect shape, uh, curled edges and the texture drawing the round ellipse shape of the plate. Yeah, and then the layers of cardboard. Yeah, so as you can see, the scratcher plate is a very, very short cylinder. So it's drawing that bottom edge with a round curve and these graphics of cartoon cats doodling them out. Now it's time to have fun painting watercolors. The color scheme is very simple, painting doo doo. First of all, starting with diluted yellow ochre. Yellow ochre mixed with a bit of uh, burnt sienna. The underlay of his fur beneath the black. Grabbing some red and dilute it, uh, which is pink for his little notes and the, uh, the nose uh, bridge area. And Dudu just uh, turned around and changed his posture. That's okay, I can still finish the painting based on his, uh, his current state right now, it's fine. It's just the drawing part that's the most important that I really hope that he would not move during the drawing part. The painting part, I can relax and even do it from memory. Uh, okay, just uh, using some leftover gray to shade the, uh, the gray little blanket diluted version of gray, greenish gray, actually. And then starting to have fun doing the next layer for Dudu's fur, burnt sienna mixed with black. Having fun uh, playing with the translucent quality of watercolors. When you're adding a new layer, that previous layer is still shining through. Playing with water control as well. So partially this uh, dark brown is slightly diluted than other areas. That's how I create uh, a sense or an illusion of volume from Dudu's fur. Adding the uh, shadow using a leftover gray around his uh, cheek area, around the belly as well. White fur doesn't mean it needs to stay perfect paper white. White stuff in the world, they're always shaded with light to medium gray. Okay, so that's very much the essence of Dudu. So now just adding some bit more heavier accentuations, including the shadow of Dudu on a blanket using my own mixture of gray, bluish purplish gray, and to shade uh, the right side of the plate here, adding a bit of uh, brown brush marks for the cardboard colors and tones, uh, accentuate the shadow a little bit more, shadow of the plate, a blue purplish gray. And here's Dudu in another lovely gesture. So I love him the best when he's sleeping, when he's not super naughty. And here is my finished sketch of Dudu done in about 25 minutes. Now I just want to finish this page with a little landscape outside uh, my parents' uh, bedroom window. Over here the sky is clearing up a little bit after the rain. Okay, so now I want to show you a bit of my uh, sky painting process. A very quick, rapid uh, painting technique. So I started with an underpainting of diluted yellow ochre mixed with lemon yellow, kind of echoing with the color of the cheesecake. 
So the sun is always shining behind the clouds during the day, even though the sky is overcast with heavy clouds.、Uh, now, just adding some、uh, leftover gray just to paint the exterior of these neighbors' houses. We're waiting for the、uh, yellow underwash for the sky to dry off. Also, some leftover brown、uh, to paint these rooftops. Yeah, very quick painting technique. Less is more. We don't have to do too many layers or adding too many colors、uh, when painting anything. And now I'm ready to、um, paint in the the clouds, which are mostly medium gray. I mix my own lively gray. By mixing cobalt blue and royal purple and a tiny bit of green together, it's actually a pretty high ratio of blue in here. And using these diagonal brush marks, following the rhythm of these clouds、uh, laid out in the sky, and、uh, playing with brush pressure control as well. The previous layer of diluted yellow is not completely dried, so、um, the bluish gray is、uh, blending off, merging with the yellow nicely. The way that I want it to be,、uh, mixing a tiny bit more purple into it. This part of the shadow, sorry, the shade of the cloud is more, a little bit more purplish. And there's subtle、uh, value transition with these、uh, cloud shades, and it does take some time to practice to achieve the subtleness of transitions of gray values. Just、uh, take your time. So here's the look of my finished sketchbook page, celebrating Dudu's birthday. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for two fresh new videos every week, and I'll see you again next time with an urban sketching or cafe sketching vlog tutorial. Bye, everyone. Have a great day.